Hello. Now I'm making a short film and it's an appeal. It's an appeal to all animal lovers out there. And it's about hedgehog. As a carer, along with other carers, there's 800 carers in this country. We are getting, not getting the message across that if you see a hedgehog out in daylight, it is dying. There's no two ways about it. There's a big problem and you've got to get it to a carer. Now what's happening is we're getting phone calls saying uh, oh I've had a hedgehog in our garden for the last two or three days. Uh, what shall I do with it? I'll tell you what you do with it. You get it across straight away. Every minute counts for that hog's life. It is important that carers get him as soon as possible so they can assess him, medicate him and look after him. Uh, so all this business about I'll bring it tomorrow, I've seen it two or three days, please don't, not anymore. A hedgehog that's out in broad daylight is asking you for help. Help can only be given by skilled carers. Well-meaning people like yourself, it's no good putting it in a box and with a bit of cat food and water thinking it's going to be all right. There's a hundred and one things wrong with hedgehogs and we as a carer <coughs> we've got to find out straight away so we can treat it and give it a chance on life. As a carer, like all of us, all we're bothered about is getting that hedgehog well again and back into the wild. Now, during the course of this film, you might see me uh, stroking a hedgehog. Uh, I'll not say no, no, because this is what we call implanting. Now, implanting or humanising. Uh, a hedgehog will take that on very easy. I would rather have an implanted or humanised hedgehog alive than a dead hedgehog. So what we do at this centre is get the confidence of the hedgehog, get the feel of the hedgehog, get to know what it's thinking. That's the way we, we operate here. And we'll, when it's time to release, we'll come Cross the bridge uh, and, tr and sort it out how to get it back into the wild because it has lots of wild instincts and they all click back into place, right? <sighs> well, it's cleaning time now and feeding time, so what I'm going to do in turn, I'm going to introduce you to all our hogs tonight and tell them why tell you why they're in here. Now this is Lucky Two here. Now Lucky Two came in, I've got to refer to the uh, our notes, he came in on January the 1st this year. A woman brought two boxes, one with Lucky Two in and another one. Uh, one of the boxes the hedgehog had died. Lucky Two is now here with us and he came in at uh, 450 grams. Uh, he's now uh, 1140. In fact he's getting to the stage now we're going to have to put him on a diet. But we have a healthy hog. They will be released, hopefully, we're going to release a lot of these hogs during the course of next week when the weather picks up. Now that's lucky too, well, that is a point. If you, you don't understand what's going on with hogs, you must take it to a carer. Right. Right, here is another example and another reason that they only guy in the street won't recognise. This is Oscar too. He came in on the 5th of December last year. 
found wandering around vastly underway to face the winter. It came in at 375 grams. That's no good for a hog uh, to winter out, but he's now, I'll just check him, he's now a big guy at 1125. Here's another one that's ready for out, fit and well, waiting for the weather to change, and he'll be off next week. He can also be a bit grumpy, this fella. Hedgehogs are moody, they're individuals and they will please themselves and if they want to be grumpy they'll be grumpy now it's not too bad tonight he's letting me stroke him uh, can you see how he's putting his quills down uh, and letting me stroke him usually they will shoot the quills up uh, into your hand but Oscar's in a good mood tonight and he's allowing me to uh, give him a cuddle Now this is Sam, another kettle of fish for a bowl of prickles. He came in on the uh, last day of January. Terrible edges to his face, I'll show you the photograph later. Uh, weighing 340 grams, terribly underweight as well. He was, uh, he was very cold, so we had to warm him up. Uh, for his recovery, he, he, we're delighted with this. He, he, he's gone with us halfway uh, in his uh, <coughs> in his help for uh, getting him better. Uh, he's a lovely lad. Oops, I was just trying to show, <laughs> but he got other other ideas then. And he's just shot a big prickle out. Okay, Sam. I'm glad you're looking better. I'm very proud that you've gone halfway and meeting us in your recovery. Thank you. Not so tiny now. He came in on the uh, uh, second of April. Far too underweight, it was one of our wild ones from the garden. Uh, 278, so we brought him in. He's now at 550. So he's another candidate for release next week. Grand little fella, we're going to miss this chap. Aren't we? That's a good boy. Just have a look at that left foot. Is it? Is that how it looks? Okay. Now here's another example. Exit two. This is. Uh, came in on the seventeenth of this month. Uh, Four fifty grams is now six fifty. So he's eating all right. Found in a garden. Dehydrated limb. Not responding to boiling. Hey, listen. Uh, put on a heat pad with food and water. His poor sample was a heavy burden of capillary eggs. He has been treated and I think he's well on the way this lad to be going back to where he came from. Isn't that right Hector? Look how he's got his uh, quills down, let me stroke him. That's uh, Lofty having his supper. Can't wait. Now don't forget he escaped out of this, so the, uh, he's glad to be uh, finding the food pot again. That's Lofty ducking in again in his, uh, his cat food then. If, if that's what I get for escaping, double food, 
I'll try it again tonight. <laughs> now this is the famous Frankie. He's beginning to look more like a hedgehog now. His, uh, his ears are clearing up. His back end, I'll just swizzle him around. This is still a problem. Uh, that is his uh, ringworm healing up. He's a bit same under his bottom. But on the whole, what Frank has gone through, he's turning out to be a good little lad. Oops, sorry Frankie. I'd still like to look at you underneath, but I think we've another day or two before you let me do that. Look at that big ear. <laughs> it's big ear. It's not crispy anymore. They look like tasty crisps last week, yeah. Well, a week before. At least that uh, aromatherapy has done him good and he feels better. I know he's going to lose all these spikes. Uh, but he's growing new ones. Is the new ones coming up under here? Sir? He'll lose all his old ones that have been cut. He's doing very well, aren't you? You're a no, good boy. Now then, Frankie, you're in good company now. You're not at Sheffield. You're at Cawthorn in the hog's prickle. And you love it, don't you? And he says it's still daytime and I want to go back to sleep. Yes, he does. So cover me up, because I don't like that sun on my face. Well, I hope that little film helps you to give you a better understanding of the hogs. Because each of these hogs have all got a problem, which we understand the scarers. So this is why I say, don't try and do it yourself. If you see a hog out in daylight, take it straight away to a carer. I don't care if you're the kindest person in the world, if you don't understand these hogs, you're going to limit their life. So please, please, please take them to a care as soon as you can see them out in the daylight. Thank you.